Hare Krishna, welcome everybody. Welcome. So we have our new friend here, Karen Francis. Give us a hello. How you doing? Hare Krishna. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. And you live in Florida? In Miami. Miami. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Nice. And um, tell us a little bit about your journey. Well, I've been involved in yoga for a very long date myself, but um, since I was old, shh, mommy's on the phone. Um, and I, I had actually this amazing experience as I traveled through adulthood. Sorry for the noise. Um, there were so many times when I met and like fell upon kirtans actually happening in process in different cities mm. in the US and the States. <laughs> um, and then when I lived in Mexico, I met devotees and people that practice bhakti and yoga in the yoga community. And it, it just was not clicking, you know? What, what city in Mexico? Um, I was actually in Media and also the Quintana Roo, Cancun. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so it took like, you know, all of these signs and experiences finally to connect the dots that my yoga journey was bhakti. And when I heard, um, I know so many people say this, but two years ago, I believe, um, Raghu was on Joe Rogan. Yeah. And I was like, this is it. I need Krishna. This is what I've been looking for. <laughs> yeah. So I immediately became a Zoomer and start to, you know, have a daily practice. Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. Um, did you get to see, did you get to eat at the, the Gopal's, uh, vegetarian restaurant in Cancun it's run by some the bhakti yogis there sorry hold on my teapot sorry no um no I did not oh well no, now um, you know next time you go there there's a there's a nice restaurant right in uh not in the, you know, where the hotels are, but in the town. Okay. And um, there's also, because uh, I, I went there maybe about four years ago to perform a wedding. I was the priest for the wedding. Oh. And uh, um, so they got us a ticket to Cancun and that was fun. Nice. And so, so go Pauls. I still, I have family there. So when I return I there's a the farm place. there's a farm um that's a, like a lovely temple there there's a farm and they have their when i was there they were building this open air temple that looked reminded me of like a like the indian temples open air temples wow and that's about 45 minutes out of the city amazing well I, I will look it up and i have some friends there so uh next time you go i can give you some contacts Great. Do you, do you know any of the family um, that have the practice Trace Puertas? I'm they're, sure. they're, lo they're in Cancun. No? Okay. Okay. May, I might have met them. There's one that I know really well, and then there's the, a few that I've met. Awesome. Well, thank you. And how, how old are your kids? Um. I have a 17 year old daughter who's actually going to the temple here with me in Miami today. Oh, nice. To the Bhakti Center. So that'll be very cool. And I have a little boy who's seven. And um, they're amazing kids. Nice. Yeah. nice. I have a nine year old, 11 year old, and a 13 year old. Amazing. Oh, wonderful. Nice. Edward G, how is it going? How is your practice going? Um, yeah, things are pretty good. Um, don't know what to say. Been been practicing, been studying, and been uh, you know, doing my practices. 
Anything you want to share with Karen? Uh, I can't think of anything. <laughs> so I was going to say, Karen, be, um, because this is a new thing. Oh, here we got Carlos. This is a, Carlos is like one of our alumni. He was there for the Bhagavad He learned chapter 15 and also chap, uh, working on chapter seven. So um, we do this class and in this class, we go deep into the verse. We don't, we, 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 we look at the points that we get from the purports, but we look at also what is called the bhashas or the commentaries of great, of the great acharyas who comment on the Bhagavad Gita that give all different, uh, very, uh, depths of, of reasonings into the verses. It's kind of like a, uh, if you look at certain jewels and you hold them to the light and you look at it a different way, angle that has different colors that come out. So in the class, we go deep into the verse. We try to actually learn the meanings of each words and kind of lock down the meanings of each of the Sanskrit words. And, and in that process, each verse becomes a little bit easier because we our, our, our um, vocabulary increases, our Sanskrit vocabulary increases. Um, but still, and, and then we do practice also in the class, but still it does take a lot of work. Um, so we have also outside of class, we have a, there's a WhatsApp group and they do meet once, a, sometimes once a week, that helps out as well. It is, um, and even despite all of that, if you're like, I, I'm, I'm, I, I, know, I learned the verse, but it's like really not sticking or I'm having a hard time. Still, we get a good, like a good um, way to dive into the verses itself. Uh, even if you find it's a struggle, um, it's still good time spent you know, learning verse, learning Bhagavad Gita verses. Carlos, how are you doing? I don't know if he is frozen. Oh, there he is. Prabhu, thank you. How's your how's your Gita practice? I think there's a little delay. It's getting better actually. Uh, sorry if my internet is not good. And Dana K, how you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Thank Welcome. You. I'm so happy that you're here. <laughs> no, I was I was gonna ask you, are you happy to be here? And I know you're gonna say yes. I am. Yes. And so I have a good something that'll make you happy. So well, first of all, we we practiced um this week. Um Carlos um and a few of us practiced and it really helped a lot. And it's funny because at my stage group on one day, they were talking about something. And then all of a sudden, um, <laughs> we had broken out into part of a, a verse. And I'm like, wait a minute. I know that one. I, I didn't remember like which one it was, but I remembered the actual verse. And I started, it was like, wait a minute. It's Rosso Hum of Sekunteya. And she, he was like, yeah, wait, you know that one? And I was like, that's because that's from my group. And I was so excited because it was like... <laughs> I like, as soon as he started saying it, it like dinged in my head and it was just like, whoa. And then that was funny because that was the one we started with when we practiced this week. And I'm like this, I don't know, this verse just keeps coming up this week. So I just was kind of excited that. Nice. <laughs> that I was nice. <laughs> but I had to share that with you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Always enthusiastic. Uh, Rupa Goswami describes six different elements that uh, aid our spiritual life. Utsaha nishchaya dharya tat tat karma pavarta nat sangha tyaga sato vritte sadbir bhaktir prasidyati. And the first element is that enthusiasm. So one day we'll do those those uh, those issue those ne uh, nectar of instruction verses because those are really cool. Um, and so, okay, so today. We're continuing on. This is the section where Krishna is talking about those who accept him. So, Karen, chapter seven, there's a, there is a really uh, smart monk named Suttapa, and he took every chapter of the Bhagavad Gita 
and he divide he divided the conversational flow um, of each chapter into acronyms. And it makes it really easy to remember, you know, because sometimes most of the time we see the verse individually, but rather also seeing what's what's the whole topic for you know a section of verses, how it's how is it moving, where is he going with it? And so just to give an example, you have chapter 15. The the acronym is home, H-O-M-E. So the first three verses, no, the first six verses, Krishna discuss whether this world is our home or, her, or actually a hotel. And the answer is, it's a hotel. You can't stay here. You can't stay here and you don't own it. You don't own anything here. It's just like a hotel. You, you, you're just here for temporarily. You don't, re, don't think about repainting the walls. Don't start putting your pictures everywhere because you just can't stick around. And then O stands for the over and over and over, on and on again, the cycle of reincarnation. So that's the verses seven through 11. Then uh, M stands for maintainer. And so Krishna describes how he's the maintainer of the body, maintainer of the mind, and maintainer of the self, the soul. And so he talks about how he provides sunlight, moonlight, fire, electricity, fire, digest, uh, not the power within fire, the power within electricity, not that he's... Uh, uh, the, our electric company, the power that's there, and even the power of the fire with the power within the fire of digestion. So that's body. He provides uh, remembrance and forgetfulness and, and the, the and knowledge, the functionings of the mind. And then he provides the Vedas, which uh, support the self, the soul. And the last uh, verses, 16 through 20, is the essence. E is for essence, where he describes. Um, the uh, essential meaning of Bhagavad Gita and describes the soul and its relationship with God. And then here, chapter seven, the acronym is, uh, is HEAD, H-E-A-D. And so we're on the A section. Hearing is the first part. Uh, Krishna describes how from if you hear from the uh, about him, from him, or the, the spiritual lineages from him, that spiritual authority, one can understand and know him. And, and such hearing is very rare. Uh, many, you know, out of many thousands of human beings, hardly one is seeking even spiritual perfection. And out of thousands of them, hardly one even understands. What is that verse, Carlos or Edward? Um, Manushanam Sahasreshu Kastudyatati Siddhaye. Yes, yes, yes. And then see with Sanskrit, there's a lot of English over over um, overlays. Manu, Manu means man. Uh, you have a lot of things that are con connected to English and other languages in Sanskrit. Then E stands for energies. And Dana Kay just did one of those verses about energies are everywhere, where he's like, I'm the, 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 the pure taste in water. I'm the, the rasoham apsukunteya prabhashmi shashishir. I'm the light of the sun and the moon. Uh, pranava, I am the sound, uh, om, uh, I'm the sound in ether. And I am the ability in man. So seeing Krishna everywhere. And now he is talking about those who this section is called accept and reject and so he first he describes four people who just are don't have an interest in in god divine anything like that and then you describe four types of people who do those who are what are the sanskrit words for them carlos arto uh arto arti uh, sorry, I, I, I don't, I don't know. Hot seat. Early in the morning. Yeah, the Sukritinos, the, the, those who use their credit for good things. Um, so those are uh, people who are dis in distress. Oftentimes come to God. People are looking for material things, money and 
things they're like pray to god those who are actually just wanting to know how things are go, run the curious and uh the jnani the person who's just actually seeking the absolute without any other type of material desire not the uh curiosity of mind or uh, money or power or even uh, the um, riddance of distress and so then the verse after that just leading to this verse it says the jnani the person who's seeking the absolute and has some affection for god he is the best he is most dear to me um he prakash prakash is entering All right. Welcome, Prakash. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Where are you coming, calling in from? I'm calling in from uh, Harrow in London. Nice. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much. So, so uh, we, we just did a, uh, some introductory to the class. So I did record, uh, this is recorded. So if you, uh, if you want to go back and see, um, later on today, the beginning of the class, um, it'll be there. Um, and we're doing kind of an overview of chapter seven, just to give an, ex an example, because we have one, another new student as well. Um, and so, do you know Sutapa? Do you happen to know Sutapa, a monk in London? I actually, um, <laughs> he gave me a hug today. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Very <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you got the hot. Maybe you can give uh, share some of the hug vibes with us. All right, we, he got a he got a hug from the, the the author of the book of that Bhagavad Gita and acronyms that were uh, has been very useful for this class. Yeah. And so, chapter seven is H E A D, uh, hearing everywhere, seeing Krishna everywhere, accept and reject, and we're almost into the D, the demigod section, and so. Uh, Krishna just said, "For all the, there are four types of people that surrender to me: the distressed, the, the seeker of wealth, the person who is just wanting to know how things are run, the curious, and those who are just only seeking God." Uh, and then he says, after that, I think it's verse uh, seventeen. He says, "One who is just seeking God with devotion, he is the best. He's the best." And then one may assume, okay, well then that means the others are just like. They're, they're kind of useless. And so this is the verse where he's saying, no, no, no. <laughs> any, this is the heart of Krishna. This is the heart of Krishna. You show him any affection and he just wants to give himself to you. He just, he's just like a extremely magnanimous. Um, so here is the verse 718. Udara, maybe should I put it up on the on the screen? You guys like that? Want me to put it up on the screen? All right. Let's put yes, it yes, please. Okay. That way everybody doesn't have to scramble and I'm trying to figure out where is it. Um here I'll just 18. Let us out of the EVT. Let me see if I can make it a little wait. Smaller. Okay, and share screen. All right. Boom. Here we are. And just a little notes for, let's see. Little notes for those who are new to chanting Sanskrit. Um, the J and A, this J and sound uh, is in kind of modern use is mostly like a gya sound. If you get some real Sanskrit scholars, they might do it a little bit of, hard, uh, of a hard J, uh, but Generally, for people to understand you, it's jnani or jnana is a, if, it's another word, similar, a related word, jnani. Um, 
actually this JNA is the same root where we get the English word knowledge with the K, you know, this silent K. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's, it means knowledge. So I'm just going to point out a these a few odd items here. So this H with the dot, uh, we don't really put much emphasis on it unless it is on the end of the second or the fourth line. So if you see this, this is how it's written in you know, the palm leaves or the ancient books. Uh, the Although it's coming out to be like four lines, it's 32 syllables, eight syllables each. It's written out 16 and 16 syllables. If the this H with the dot ends at the end, so if it ends up here or here, you can see this is actually the letter M, letter M, see, M. But if it ends up here, then you you do what you're called to do. And so what are you, what are you called to do? When you see a, a H with a dot like that, it's udara ha. It is an extension of the vowel to the other side. But it's it's not really done unless it's, you know, you're not going to hear it so much unless it's like the end of the second and fourth line. So that's not here in this verse. And we don't see it in this verse, but the, also the letter C, when it's used in what is called the uh, diacritic uh, Roman transliteration, it's a ch sound. It's never a ka or a sa or anything. It's always the ch, the ch sound. So, udara sarva evite. You can re repeat after me. Jani tvai tvat maiva me matam. That's going to be a, a hard one there. <laughs> Tvat, tvat maiva, tvat maiva, me matam. Ashtit as. Oh, this is not a. There's no. There's no dot on the s. Astita, sa hi tat ma. Mam eva anutamam gatim. And it's always a good practice when you have the long. A's, the long U's, to just really uh, go for it. Just, just overemphasize it. It because it there's a there's a rhythm, there's a song, there's a melody for all these verses, and it it, it helps to set it in place. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna we'll go back to the Sanskrit, but we're gonna look at the verse. All these devotees are certainly magnanimous souls but he who is situated in knowledge of me i consider to me just like my own self being engaged in my transcendental service he is sure to attain me the highest and most perfect goal so i i just want to mention something i read in I think it is Baladev Yibhushan's purport. Uh, actually, Prabhupada uh, quotes some of the same verses uh, that's in Vishnu Chakravati Thakur's purport. Um, so here he's saying that 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 great soul he, uh, that has you know some affection for him, who's just seeking him. He says, "I consider him just like myself." Um, but in the verse, in the purport, Vishnu uh, Chakravati Thakur, I think, no, it's maybe Baladeva Yibhushan, it's one of the two, two main commentators on the Bhagavad Gita. They give even a level higher. What's the next level? He says, for the devotees that just have pure love, because this is, you know, head, this is kind of on the way there. Not 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 a, a full maturity. Um, that person who is seeking God and has love, but the person who has like full love, Krishna says, I consider that person 
even greater than myself. So that's really far up. This is the heart of Krishna. So he says, I consider just like my own self, but there's another one he considers even greater than myself. It is not that devotees who are less complete in knowledge are not dear to the Lord. The Lord says that all are magnanimous because anyone who comes to the Lord for any purpose is called a Mahatma or great soul. The devotees who want some benefit out of devotional service are accepted by the Lord because there is an exchange of affection. So this is um, out of affection. They ask the Lord for some material benefit. And when they get it, they become so satisfied. They also advance in devotional service. But the devotee in full knowledge is considered very to be very dear to the Lord because his only purpose is to serve the Supreme Lord with love and devotion. What did we mention in the previous verse is that um, many of the others, the other three categories, when they get something, sometimes they give up the Lord. They give up that practice of bhakti because they got what they wanted. They got the wealth. They got the freedom from distress, or they got some some uh, knowledge. Can't get Carlos back in. All right. and so sometimes they they leave, but that's not the case for the the, the sincere seeker or the jnani. But the devotee in full knowledge is considered very dear to the Lord because his only purpose is to serve the Lord with love and devotion. Such a devotee cannot live without a second, with live a second without contacting or serving the Lord, Supreme Lord. Similarly, the Supreme Lord is very fond of his de devotee and cannot be separated from him. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, the Lord says, Sadavo hidayam mahyam, mahyam sadunam hidayam twaham, mad anyate na jananti. Naham tevyo magnanga pi. The devotees are always in my heart. And I am always in the heart of my devotees. The devotee does not know anything beyond me. And I also cannot forget the devotee. There's a very intimate relationship with, between me and the devotee, pure devotees. Pure devotees are full in knowledge, are never out of spiritual touch. Therefore, they're very dear to me. So here, the key, this is that point I was mentioning. Yeah, by Vishnu Chakravati Taco. Here's someone's knocking on the door. Hold on. Devaki. I'm my class. No problem. Here, if you see, the jnani who has a predominance of bhakti and no material desire is considered by the affectionate Lord as his own self. But the kevala, kevala means pure, unmixed bhakta, the pure devotee is considered by the Lord to be dearer than his very self. And one of that verses was right here. Here's another verse. My dear Uddhava, neither Brahma, Lord Shiva, nor Sankarshan, the goddess of fortune, neither near, nor indeed my own self are dear to me as you are. Uddhava is a prema bhakta, a kevala bhakta, a, a, a fully a mature, advanced devotee. And so there's different verses that he gave. Oh, Carlos got in and let him back in the room again. His internet's kicking him out. Edward G, any uh, any thoughts, any reflections you got? I guess um, my brain is on slow motion today. I haven't, haven't got any thoughts at the moment. No problem. Prakash, any any thoughts you got? Anything you wanna? Any questions you have? I was um, just uh, digesting, um, but it's 
it's, it's kind of wonderful that um, if we can kind of focus purely on Krishna, then um, he will see us as, as his kind of most, um, you know, most favoured devotees and kind of yes. somehow have that, that focus. What's this curtain behind me? Because it's got a big glare. So this is one of this is giving little hints of Krishna's amazing qualities. You give a tiny, 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 tiny little bit, and he puts a magnet magnifying glass on it and says, "Look at him. He's great." You know, you 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 uh, uh, accidentally open the door for a de devotee at. Uh, at Sam's at Walmart or something. <laughs> and because of that, Krishna's like, man, I'm giving that guy some bhakti. <laughs> he just did service for my devotee. Yeah. You do something small and Krishna puts that huge magnifying glass and says, my devotee is so great. And you sincerely you know, want to seek him. And he says, I consider him to be just like me. And then you serve, you serve him with great love. And he says, I consider him greater than me. So this is a, this is the great heart of Krishna. And that's a lot of that's going to be in the ninth chapter as well. Um, yeah. There's some very nice verses in the Bhagavatam indicating this, that yeah, how he, he magnifies now um, us on the other side, if someone does something great for us, they do something small for us, we forget it. They do something great for us, we also may forget it. And then what we do, we take a magnifying glass to all their terrible faults. It could be one little tiny one, but we put a big magnifying glass and say, man, look at this guy. I have uh, my friend, or more of a teacher. She is a disciple of Srila Prabhupada. She's in her 70s. And I was at the funeral of her son. And she uh, became joined an ashram when she was young in the 70s. And her son also joined in with her. And he was about seven years old. And he uh, liked the Krishna consciousness, Bhakti, but he didn't really take to it very seriously. And later in his life, he got into drugs. And because he got into drugs in his, uh, he actually passed away. Um, I, can't remember. I, I, met, I knew him, but I, I can't remember exactly, but he just had, it was just generally unhealthy. And I was there at his funeral and his mother came up to me and she's, she's not a very sentimental person. She's like a real, like, she's like a, uh, Lady Bhakti Siddhanta, she's like just like a, a logician or something, just like shh, kind of serious, kind of grave person. And she said, she said, all oh, right now, all I can think about, he said, usually I can think about so many terrible things that he's done. He says, all I can think about is the devotional service that he's done for Krishna. That's the only thing I can think about. And she said, and that's how Krishna sees. He doesn't really care about all your other nonsense that goes on, you know, whatever. 98% of the time, he's like, just looking at that one, ooh, ooh that 2% that you did, he's like, look, he's great. So this is the, the great heart of Krishna. That he, it just takes, you, you give a little and he takes it as a lot. And so, yeah, we read that, that those nice verses there. So this, yeah, this verse he's saying, he said, they're all exalted because that's just the nature of Krishna's heart is that, and there's a very important verse that uh, we often, uh, there's a very important verse that we often uh, uh, refer to. Let me see. I think it's four left or four. Come on. It's all about the reciprocal relationship. 
ye yata mam prapajante tamsta teva bajam yaha mama vartmanu vartante manusha parta sarvashaha so krishna saying according to how we prapajante how we surrender and this this chapter remember we went over this chapter chapter 7 it's all about this prapadyante, the surrender. It just keeps on coming up. It talks about uh, why someone would prapadyante, surrender to the demigods, uh, or what leads one to prapadyante, surrender. So according to how we reciprocate with Krishna, he reciprocates with us. If we say there is no God, how does he reciprocate? Carlos G. Um, so I, I believe that he allows the, dev the devotee to uh, dwell in the Brahmayoti or the heart, the God within the heart. If someone's an atheist, he says there's no God, there's nothing, then he shows him, he shows him nothing. He, he, he's, like one, he's like the fish that's in the water, and the other fish says there's this water everywhere, and he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't see it. And he says, what are you talking about? It's everywhere. It's in your gills. You don't feel it? And he's like, no, I don't feel it. So he reciprocates. The atheist says there is no God. Therefore, you, you can't prove God to anyone because it, Krishna has, has created the whole system to reciprocate with their uh, approach. And someone says, oh, I'm God. You're God. It's all God then he's going to reciprocate and only reveal that impersonal side. And someone says, "There, uh, I want to, someone tries to approach with some affection, and then he responds with approaches of affection. So it's a reciprocal. That's, what's, uh, that's what the verse is kind of hinting on here. Nice. Back to the, Okay. Let's see if there's any. I'll just quickly look at this. The, then the first three worshipers do not have affection for you. No, Krishna says, no, it's not so. I said the jnani holds me exceedingly dear. They're all generous in giving me love. They who worship me receive objects of their material desires, which I desire to give. Generously offer me their affection as a devotee. Certainly I hold that person very, uh, I hold, I hold, Dear, that person who gives so much to me. So you give it so much. Well, you give a little bit of your heart. He, Krishna takes it as so much. So that's how he says it. Uh, the jnani, however, is my life and soul. That is my opinion. He has offered his mind to me, yuktatma, without desiring anything else other than me. He is unable to remain even for a fraction of a second without me because of his extreme affection. He remains confirm, uh, firmly convinced that I am alone are the highest object to be achieved. I cannot remain for a fraction of a second without such a person. See the reciprocation? He can't remain a fraction of a second without me, and I can't remain a fraction of a second without him. Okay. And then he uh, goes on to say that one should not try to mistranslate this verse. One cannot propose that in, the, in this verse that the Lord says he's non-different from the soul, the jiva, who has become a jnani, because this is not the goal of the worship of the jnani. As well, there's no statement showing this uh, result for any of the four types of worshipers. As well, there are contrary statements made elsewhere of the difference between the jiva and the jnani, even in the state of liberation. The jnani is called my atma, myself, only because of my extreme affection for him. This is similarly to saying, out of affection, Vajrasena is my very self. Others say Atma means the mind in this verse. In that, in that case, the sentence would mean my mind thinks of him constantly. And so let's go look at the, the words. So, Carlos, what is Sarva? I will need to hide it for a little second. <laughs> sarva means all. All. Um, Edward, what is Gyani? Um, a wise person. Yeah, a wise person. 
full wow. knowledge. And, and here it's um, in general, Gyani is that wise person who's kind of seeking spiritual knowledge. And here uh, it's a, uh, it's that plus the strong connotation of seeking God with, with affection. Uh, any, but let's yukta. Does anybody, this, this word yukta, we kind of uh, go into a bit in different verses. I believe it comes from the word yog, which means to unite or to uh, yeah yeah to bound to find yeah so huge is the root it's the same root of the word yoga union yoke uh, are the English uh, equivalents um, so when you when you're binding connecting when you're connecting ashita yuktatma so he is engaged in this connection this devotional service oh I clicked on the wrong word clicked on Atma instead of Yukta. Yukta at Bhagavad Gita, chapter seven, chapter, yeah. Yukta Chetasaha, Yukta Atma. Then uh, Atma, self, soul, mind, it's kind of like how we use in English, we might say my, myself might refer to the body, the mind, or the, the soul. And gatim, this is a gati, is a, this is an important word. I don't think we had this word yet in any of our verses, but gati is uh, the, the goal, the ultimate destination. Ah, anutamam, uta, utamam, anutamam, utamam. Um, Ut, is this word utam just without the anu the utamam uh, sometimes you hear the best the highest gatim gati means uh, yeah goal destination udara sarva evete repeat after me jnani Twat may twat maiva may matam ashtita sahi yuktatma mam eva nutamam gatim okay edward g you want to read one line at a time Okay. Udara sarva evete. Udara sarva evete. Yani twat maeva me matam. Yani twat maeva me matam. Astita sahi yuktatma. Astita sahi yuktatma. Mam eva natam. <laughs> Mam eva nu tamam gatim. Mam eva anu tamam gatim. Here's another word that we have had some familiarity is if you take off the a, stita, stita, where you stand, like we say, Pakistan, Uzbekistan is also actually, those stands are directly from here. So stita. Astita, let's see, uh, any chapters that we've covered here for Ashtita? Maybe not Ashtita, but Shtita we have. Um, okay, exact word or contains Shtita. And you see, look at this, 37 times in the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, chapter 15, here you go, Carlos. Yathanta yogina shainam bashantyat mavashtitam shtitam. Um, it's once in the seventh and twice in the 15th. Situated in the body, stitam. Utkramantam stitam vapi. These are all verses Carlos knows. He's our chapter 15 alumni. Graduated. 
ashtitam. So here you go, this ashtita. Just, you just think of the word stand, standing, sit, being in, stuck or being uh, stable. Ashtita, situated, stable. And yuktatma, this, this is, the, this is the, the devotional service, the connection. So what is he stable in? He is, he is being engaged in transcendental service. Okay, let's so, um, Carlos, you want to do one line at a time? Ud, udaraha, sorry, ud, udara sarva evate, udara sarva evate, jnani twat maiva metam, memam, sorry, jnani twat, Gyani twat ma maima me matam. Gyani twat maiva me matam. Ashtita sahi yuktatma. Ashtita sahi yuktatma. Mam eva nu tamam gatim. Mam eva nutamam gatim. All right. Prakash, would you like to do one, one word? Well, I'll, I'll, you can repeat after me. Udara. 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 Sarva. Sarva. Evete. Evete. Gyani. Gyani. Twat. Maiva. Tvat Maiva. Me Matam. Me Matam. Astita. Astita. Sahi. Sahi. Yuktatma. Yuktatma. Mam. Mam. Eva Nutamam. Eva Nutamam. Gatim. Gatim. Kya pindi shimashti hai? Uh, I can understand. I can't speak it. Okay. And you, do you have any uh, Indian languages that you speak? Yeah. Or? State language? Gujarat? Gujarati. Gujarat. Kemcho. <laughs> Majama. Majama. Saruche. <laughs> nice. you're, 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 you've, you're, your family's been in London for a long time. Yeah, yeah I was um, brought up here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you want to do one line at a time. Udara, uda, udara, sarva, evete. Udara, sarva, evete. Gyani. Tvat maiva me matam. Sorry. Gyani, tvat maiva me matam. Astita sahiyuktatma. Astita sahiyuktatma. Mam eva natuma eva nutamam gatim. Mam eva eva nutamam gatim. Now most verses, this I don't think this is a, one of the easy ones. This is this one doesn't just click so easily. Some some things that make it easy. Also, there's some elements that we haven't been doing. A lot of times, what we do is we act out some of the phys, We try to physically act out certain words. Um, and then if you have, uh, if you also, if you have verses where you just, the, if, if you understand the English word and it, the grammar easily translates to English, like without, like if you put magnanimous, all, uh, the, all certainly these, uh, the one who is in knowledge, just like myself, my opinion, it, it, it doesn't translate so easily. Some some verses are really like the the words are like a like a, a one example is dehi no svenyata dehi komaram yovanam jara. He says dehi no the one in the body smitin svenyata dehi uh, changes his dehi no svenyata dehi just as the one in the body. Uh, uh, Komaram Yovanam Jara, from boyhood to youth to old age, Tatas Dehantara Prap, dear. He similarly 
changes his body uh, uh, at the end, he does touch on a muhyati. A sober person is not bewildered by such a change. Just, uh, just knowing the, the meaning of the words, it's like you automatically come to the translation. But some verses, you know the meaning of the words, you can study the meaning of the words, but still the it, it doesn't, the, the way it's made up doesn't really immediately make you think of a, of a proper translation. It's a little bit harder. So I wouldn't say this verse is the easiest one. Uh, so don't be so intimidated by it. Um, hopefully you're not intimidated by it, or, uh, all of you. And, and so, so sometimes we act out also some of the ideas. Uh, sometimes it's a little easier, like when we have a lot of visual elements, like we have the banyan tree and upward, downward roots. Those are easier to act out. Um, let's see. Dana Kay, let's do one word at a time. Oh boy, you're right. This one is tough. <laughs> Udara. Udara. Sarva. Sarva. Evete. Evete. Jani. Jani. Twat Maiva. Twat Maiva. Maiva. Yeah. Twat Maiva. Twat Maiva. Yeah. I think it's easy to like, if you put this side, you know, the uh, mm, yeah. Maiva, like kind of like that. That's yeah. makes it a little yeah. easier to say. Me matam. Me matam. Astita. Astita. Sahi. Sahi. Yuktat ma. Yuk. Ma. Mom. Mom. Eva. Eva. Nuta mom. Nuta mom. Gatim. Gatim. All right. Karen. Karen G. Are you free? Oh, hey, it's me, Karen Francie. Did you say, I thought you said G. Yeah, Karen G. That's like a, a it's like a, how they call people in India. So oh, I mean, cool. Carlos G, Edward G. What's up, G? What's up, G? Yes, Srila Prabhupada. <laughs> he was the OG, the Swami G. So um, you would you like to do one word at a time? Yes, um, please. Okay. Udara. Udara. Sarva. Sarva. Evete. Evete. Gyani. 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 Twat. Maiva. Maiva. Twat maiva. Me matam. Me matam. Astita. Astita. Sahi. Sahi. Yuktatma. Yuktatma. Mom. Mom. Eva. Eva. Nutamam. Nutamam. Gatim. Gatim. Thank you. Very wonderfully done. <laughs> so um, here's uh, precaution and, and care. One of the things that also helps with what we're doing, because a lot of people, they uh, not a lot of people, but what, sometimes people become monks, they live in temples, and, and oftentimes they do try to learn these verses, or people go to temples and like, okay, I want to learn these verses. I see these people, the teachers are all reciting these verses to, to as reference points. And we learn a few and then we lose our steam. And why do we lose our steam? Because we realize we forget them. They go away. So um, one of the, the benefits, like Carlos, how's your chapter 15? You got it? You still got it? So he has, yes, he has a whole chapter memorized. 
So one of the benefits uh, of the, the, the ways that we're doing this is that say you learn one verse, two verse, three verses, four verses, five verses, then you need a few things to keep those verses in your memory. You need the circumstances by which you're, you're using them. And then you have to have the intelligence to use them. So that means, first of all, you, you got to be giving class every day or something. And, be, and then you have to have a brain to make it all connected. And that may not be any of us. But the Bhagavad Gita is a song. And any fool can sing a song. And that's where we benefit. Is that when you put it all together, the verses, they all make sense together. If you, if you memorize a bunch of random verses and, and recite them together, they don't exactly feed off to the next one. It, it, you know, it's, a, it's like a story. It's like one part leads to the next part. As we were mentioning, There's a, there is a conversational flow. So once you, you know, it does take the work to, to, to memorize it. Um, there is, you know, learning new words. Our vocabulary increases, things like that. But what happens is because it's a song, it's you just recite it, you know, every day, or even if you uh, once a week, and you'll find that it sticks with you. You still have it. You have this a whole chapter of this wonderful, powerful, sacred book in your pocket at every moment. It can be used as. Uh, Carlos, how long does it take you to chant chapter 15 from uh, first verse to the last verse? I couldn't say more than three minutes, not even. Two so minutes, how many so. of you know the lyrics for three-minute songs? Uh, I've been doing this for a while, and so uh, I can do chapter 15 in uh, under two minutes. Uh, it becomes like... A, um, like uh, 10 verses a minute and two minutes, 20 verses and the whole chapter. And I got the whole thing covered. Um, and so that's one of the benefits of the way we do it is that, you know, there is, you know, this, this work that we try to learn it and learn it. And so, you know, that look into all the different elements of the verse and all these different commentaries. And sometimes they'll say certain things. Like we looked at the, um, what was it? I think it was uh, Baladev Yibushana, or, or he says, like you see in the commentary, they they quote certain parts of the verse. Let me see. Let me share. Okay. Like he says, the Amara Krosh dictionary says udara means great or generous. So when we read something like that, then it, it reinforces our, our, our memory of the, that particular word. And some of these words, we in, in the long run, we may not remember. But there's oftentimes there are certain key words that will stick with us over time. And it makes us remember what the verse is about. We're, we're also aiming for uh, being able to translate this in our own words. Not, uh, it's, it's good to be able to also remember the English properly. Um, but if you can remember what the verse is about, all these devotees are magnanimous souls, but he is situated in knowledge of me. I consider to just like my own self being engaged in my devotional service. He's sure to attain me the highest and most perfect goal. So what are some ways I could say that in my own words? Um, so there are all the other of the other, uh, the other three of the four are great. But the person who is uh, fully situated in, in, in knowledge of me, I considered may matam, just like myself, ma maeva, may, maeva may. Uh, engage in the devotional service. He attains the supreme goal. Um, let's see, is there anything else I missed? Which is the highest, most perfect goal. Um, Engage in my devotional service. He is sure to attain me. Okay, I forgot that. He attains me, the most highest and perfect goal. Okay. So that was a, it was a rough translation, but it was given, you know, in my own words. And that way, 
we don't have two separate things going on, the Sanskrit and the English. We have the Sanskrit and it brings out meaning to us. That's the idea. That not that we have this da 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 we say, and then we have some rote English thing that we also just recite. But rather we we say the Sanskrit and the, and meanings are coming to us. And with and you don't need to know san like no to be a translator in Sanskrit. Because to translate, you need to know grammar. We don't, we just have to be very familiar with the verse that it causes us to remember the translation, not to tr not really translate it, but just to remember the translation. So we may have to try to, you know, slightly remember the English. You know? it's, a, it's a little easier if you've heard these verses over and over and over again many times. Um, but yeah. Some of these verses would come when you come across some famous ones and it really sticks. All right. I think uh Prabhu, I think Karuna yes. today in the wisdom of this the wisdom of the sages show, she uh she re recited it uh 7.7. 7, uh, yes, as pearls are strung on a on a thread. Yeah. What's the what's the first part? Because she couldn't remember the first part. <laughs> I was trying to remember what is the first part. I think she said the first two lines, and I think she forgot to say um, the last, the last little bit. But mm, you know, now that now that you put Sutre Managanaiva, yeah. Uh, as what is the first? All these truths. What is that? No, no, sorry, sorry. Ram nan yet. Yeah, I think she started with the first line. Yeah, Kinchit asti dananjaya, mai sarvam idam proptam sutre. Mana mani ganaiva. All these truths are strung upon me, arrest upon me, as pearls are strung on a thread. All right. So let's do a little more. Just again, we'll do a little more practice, and then then I think we're about done. Any questions? Anybody have any questions? Okay, let's see. Oh, they go back to. Here we go. Udara sarva ibete. Gyani tot maeva me matam. Astita sahi yuktatma. Mam evan mam evanuta mam gatim mam eva anuta mam gatim mam eva nuta mam gatim I think I think I like like Carlos do, I did I gotta underemphasize the you Udara sarva evete. Gyani twat meva me matam. Gyani twat meva me matam. Astita sahi yuktatma. Astita sahi yuktatma. Mam eva to mam eva nutamam gatim. Mam eva nutamam gatim. Udara sarva evete. Gani tut me va me matam Astita sahiyuktat ma Mam evil eva nutamam gatim All right. Well, this just check in, Prakash. What are what what are your feelings about all this? What do you, what, how do you feel about this class? Are you like uh, I don't know about it, or like I, I can't <laughs> do it, or? Uh, wow, I have to admit, it, it's um, definitely 
feels very challenging um but um i i'm really even just the short time i've been on and the the youtubes uh, the videos that i've seen of the previous ones um plus the practice with with carlos and dana was was amazing so i really enjoying like just the opportunity to to actually try and get into these verses and and the way also that it's not just a one dimensional this word for this but it's the kind of breadth that you're bringing in terms of the others but i had one question if i may oh please is, yeah. so obviously we're on seven um verse 18 um or text 18 so i've got to go i need to go back from the start after what we finish after we finish up to it uh, goes up to verse 30 do like carlos did carlos started in the middle of 15 and when he finished the whole course because usually we, we stop for at least a month or so then work on verses one leading up okay few. so it doesn't matter where you're at you know it, it does help with having live class but you can still uh with the whatsapp group you can still wherever you're at they just say, hey, let's can we practice this? I'm or you, you know, you jump in, um, find out with the WhatsApp group when they're practicing. Or you can say, I can practice at this time. It's not a specific, you know, they just kind of just mention there. Uh, wherever you're at, you'll have somebody there to help you wherever you're at. And so um, yeah, so yes, just continue on from here. And then when we're done with it, go back, go back. And you can work with others okay. and we'll probably after we finish the chapter we'll take a, a break as well uh i think at least a month um it gives people time to because well one thing is like so um my wife and i we run some airbnbs and so this is going to be like starting an airbnb you you know you do all this work but at the end you just relax <laughs> It, 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 there's investment, there's all this work that's done. Um, but once it's running, it's like, there's not much work to be done. You know, you, if you have some good cleaners and stuff like that, people that you hire the cleaners, then there's not much work to be done. So similarly, there's there's this work, This, like we said, there's a challenge there in the beginning, but basically you get to keep this whole chapter with you for the rest of your life. Uh, and so, uh, one thing we do at kind of at the end also is we try to learn how to, one good practice is present the chapter in summary to recite five verses and explain, uh, and explain those five verses in, in three minutes or five minutes, and then recite the next five and explain those in five minutes. So those are some things that can be done after the, the finish the whole and then, because when you teach something, that's when you really, um, really brings out um, challenges of the mind to make all the connections and stuff. Actually, that's stated in the Bhagavatam by one of the uh, Vishnath Chakravati Thakur. He says, out of, the, out of the three, the person who is teaching, the person who is asking the questions, and the persons that are listening, the person who is teaching gets the most benefit because it, it really... Uh, challenges the brain the most to to make all those connections so we will ask ourselves let me let me practice you know i can just you know talk tell talk to my house plant and tell them you know even if you don't have an audience just like you know practice with the four walls you know to give them a summary of the chapter or call up your friend and say hey can i wrap a chapter of the gita to you and then you start reciting all the sanskrit and then at the end or you can do, you know, section by section, give a summary of that section. And that, that helps to um, uh, see the flow and see all the points that are there. And um, it's wonderful. I wanted to also mention, Prabhu, that uh, I'm available for anyone um, right now who's listening um, throughout the week that we can get together sometime to, again, like we did last week, and practice perhaps um, maybe the later chapters now that I'm uh, I'm taking your advice, thinking on that, Chandra, about um, how we shouldn't really focus on like the past verses and more focus on like the present ones. And then we can come back at the end to the beginning. And, and, and I can even like take time afterward on this whole or chapter 
to come back because it'll be a good refresher. So, yeah, I, I'd love to uh, get together with some of you guys and uh, maybe Nityana Chandra. You can also, you know, if you, yeah. you have time, I know you, you're a busy guy too. You have family and things like that. But if you can uh, get together with us, like we would really benefit from your association. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Karen Francis is your first class. Any, any uh, reflections? What do you, what, any thoughts? I'm blown away. Um, I always thought this was unattainable and I heard Carlos on wisdom of the sages also. And um, I'm just really grateful to be here. It was a little intimidating until I heard you working with us and allowing us to recite it back to you. And I'm really delighted with the idea of singing it because I think that's just such a powerful way to let it sink into the mind and stick. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and 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 the the WhatsApp group that's that they spend a lot of time just in the practice. Practice also kind of quizzing each other on the words a little bit, but a lot about the practice and then generally half of the class, a little bit more than half of the class as we dive into the all the purports and the meanings of the verse and things things related to the verse. And then we have um, maybe one third of the class, generally we have about a little bit of practice, about one third of the class, but then the WhatsApp group that really helps. And there are really, uh, there are many practitioners who've been doing this for 30 years, 40 years, and they would be, sh they are shocked to see someone like Carlos, who's reciting all these verses. They're like, I didn't, I did not know that, that this can be done. And it re really, if you put it together, sing as it a song, it's sung, and they all make, they all reinforce, they all make sense together. Uh, it, it makes it a whole lot easier. Uh, there's there's that investment in the beginning but it's like you know once you got the song you got the song it's a, a you know you can like a chap sometimes if you've done it for it's been a, it hasn't been a while you can go chant the chapter only once a week and still it's 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 still there for you maybe you go back and look at the book and you realize okay these two verses are similar and i kind of messed up one of the words here and I, I accidentally put a line from this verse to that verse. But in general, it's like you, you get to keep the, all this great wisdom uh, in your pocket. You know, did they have that? Remember, they had that uh, that uh, uh, that astrologer. He was a big time uh, 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 medical. He had a medical institution. And, oh, yeah. Yeah. And and. and not really due to any fault of his own, he ended up in prison. So if you got if you go to prison, you got a book in your head, <laughs> just just in case. <laughs> Wherever you go, if you're in the forest, your 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 phone runs out of battery. You got something to meditate on. Is there? Um, when I uh, I used to do a puja at the temple, um, early mornings, and also like. Uh, another one at seven in the morning. And when I was offering the flowers and the incense, I would just recite these verses. That was one of my things I like to do. Sometimes there are other things that people would chant, uh, like Sanskrit offering prayers, but I would just recite these verses. So it can become part of like what is called sadhana or spiritual practice. If, if you go on a, in a, on a three minute walk, Carlos got his three minutes of a, a, a chapter 15. If he goes on a three minute walk, um, he can just be walking down the street, wrapping his Bhagavad Gita, you know, or something actually, that you do. I yeah. actually do that, Prabhu. At work, I, uh, I'm a early childhood educator. So I ha I'm actually taking care of a baby right now for, for the past year. And so we go for a stroll to the park and I'm just like wrapping it out in front of the, you know, the child. Oh, yes. And they're, they're it's nice. yeah. I do the same thing when I go for a walk with my dogs. I'm trying, I try really hard to remember them, like, you know, without looking or anything. Obviously, it's very, very difficult for me, but I try. And then if I need to, I'll look and it helps to keep me present, too. 
Nice. That's how Narada Muni became the great soul. He heard the chants of these verses while he was in his mother's womb. And then he came out born as this, this amazing Narada Muni. Oh, no, Prahlad, sorry. Pra Prahlad, I got it mixed up. Narada Muni was the one chanting, and Prahlad was hearing it while he was within the womb. The, the five-year-old, the, the son of Harani Kashipu. And then there's another book, just the last point here. There's a book called Gita uh, Mahatmya from the Padma Purana, where Lord Shiva is telling his wife, Parvati, all the amazing benefits of chanting the Bhagavad Gita, a chapter of Bhagavad Gita a day. And 18 chapters, they give 18 different stories. And they're all fantastic. Uh, like there was this one, uh, the one I wanted to say, I can't really remember all the points, but I'll tell you one. There's a guy, he is a priest. Um, but he's very musically talented. And due to his musical talent, he starts hanging out with the king. And the king is just like a lush, like a, uh, just a uh, kind of a rock, uh, kind of a indulgent guy. And so in his association, this, this formerly priest becomes a rock star, becomes like a very famous and, uh, indulgent uh, do you have a good reads application i would love the more yes i do oh, yeah 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 um I, yeah yeah um, uh, um he basically becomes like you know how a lot of times rock stars live they become very uh self-indulgent and just kind of selfish and involved in drugs and sleeping around and things like that and so he, he's like that. And then he ends up marrying this lady who is also um, sleeping around and, you know, drugs and things like that. This is in a book from the Padma Purana. And so the lady is cheating on him. But she, she, uh, he finds out. And when she uh, becomes aware that he found out, she decides to kill him and she poisons him. Uh, maybe out of fear because, uh, and then, then she later, she, she had some STD and she died. This is all in the book. It's, it's a dramatic story here. Um, so they die and they go to the abode of Yamaraj, the Lord of death. And they they experience bad karmas for their for their 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 selfish lifestyles, and then later they're born as birds. One is he is born as a vulture, and she is born as a parrot. But due to some extraordinary case, he can remember. I think both of them, but he can remember his past life. And he can remember, that's the lady who killed me. And so he starts chasing the parrot, the vulture, and tries to kill her. He's just trying to kill her, trying to kill her. And they're fighting and fighting. And there's this forest hunter who's there in the forest, and he's watching. And that's a good time to catch a prey is when they're trying to catch another prey, when they're fighting amongst each other. You know, they're, they're, All their concentration is already absorbed so that's the time to get him and so he shoots an arrow and it hits both of them i think in the wing and they fall down and then there's a human skull on the forest floor that is full of water from the rain and their heads fall in the water and they suffocate they drown in the water and then they go they die so what happens when they die they go back to the God of death, Yamaraj. Actually, uh, the, uh, there's a peanut butter called Maranath. Maranath, which is said to be a Christian name for God, but in Sanskrit, that means the Lord of death, like the God who judges you. Uh, Mara, death, Nath, the Lord, like Jagannath. And so they go to the abode of the Lord of death, and he says... Uh, your karma's wiped out. Uh, you guys 
actually are going back to the spiritual world. They're like, what? <laughs> what? We're not going to hell? What the hell? Like, where, where are we going? Like, why? He said, well, that skull that you died in, the water that you drowned in was from a skull of somebody who chanted such and such chapter of the Bhagavad Gita every day. And you got the benefit. So see you later. So there's amazing stories there in the Padma Purana, how the potency, like, for example, chapter eight, not a, I'm not going to have a whole story, but chapter eight, there is a, um, a priest and his wife. I, I think they lived some bad life and they became ghosts in their next life. And the wife was asking the husband, how do we get out of this situation? Because this sucks. You know, just imagine you have all your desires, but you got no vehicle, no physical body to give you what you want. You want to eat. You want to sleep. You want to taste things. You want to, you want to, you want to, you want interaction. You want things to do, but you don't have a vehicle to do it. And so she said, my, she called her husband, Purushota, my dear Lord, how, uh, how can, uh, no, she asked him, how can we fulfill that? And she said, you got to know what's karma. Uh, you got to know, uh, uh, Kim Karma, Kim Yatma, you got to know what is a self uh, and the Supreme Person. Uh, and she asked, what is karma? What is a self? Uh, or she was, actually, have to know karma and what is a self? That was the answer. And she said, oh, what is karma? Oh, what is a self? Oh, Prushottama, like kind of a grand term. Uh, and poof, they were no longer ghosts because she accidentally chanted one quarter of the first verse or the second verse of the Bhagavad Gita, of uh, chapter eight. Because she's, they spoke Sanskrit. So she said, Kim Karma, what is Karma? Kim Atyatma, what is the self? Kim Purushottama, oh, what is the Supreme Person? Oh, uh, uh, yeah. yeah, that's how it goes. So she asked us three questions. And because she accidentally chanted uh, one fourth of the verse, she got freed from her uh, their karmic situation of being ghosts. From I forget what brought them in that situation. So there's a lot of benefit for these chanting, just not just the intellectual or their spiritual benefit. It's pleasing to Krishna, uh, but yeah, it, it's really heavily glorified by Lord Shiva to his wife. Uh, so thank you very much. Om Tat Sat. Thanks a lot. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna.